Welcome, Xavi. Hello. Um, okay, uh, I would like you uh, to in to interrupt me uh, when whenever you whenever you want, uh, because I would like only not only give a, a talk uh, in a let's say unidirectional way, but to have a conversation if if possible. Okay. I would talk on a lot of topics. Uh, maybe I have for one hour and a half, or maybe I don't know, four hours, depend depending on the quantity of questions you you have. Okay. Anyway, uh, so I will I will share my screen. So tell me, please, if you can see it. Yeah, it's okay. You got it. Perfect. So we we will talk on agile transformation starting from the steering committee. So a uh, disclaimer before starting to with, with this topic is that uh, I don't I will not go on how to convince a steering committee for working in an agile way. So uh, once the steering committee is uh, is let's say convinced of changing things, uh, thinking in a different way and so, I will talk on what would be, some steps that that could be interesting for you okay so let's let's go well i work in a for in usually with steering committees and in the topics of strategy strategy organizational culture uh, structure and culture change i like a lot the mountains uh, music i play the bass uh, guitar from time to time I have worked out with a lot of companies um, and uh, I'm working right now in Voxel that we, we have the, let's say one of our missions is to inspire other companies to create a healthy environments for their people, okay? And they work also, I, give, I teach classes and I am the, the director of a of a master on a, in in a, in agile and I'm very let's say involved with the agile community in Spain. Okay, so let's go. Um, these are the topics we will go today through. Okay, I will. Uh, I don't know if you are familiarized with uh, models for transformation. So I will I will go really fast from some of them in order to because I will use these models during the during this talk. Okay. Uh, other topics we will go through are uh, this, um, the steering committee as a team, how to create self awareness or of uh, how we are behaving in the organization. We will talk on culture change. We, I, I will explain what are the main transformation work, work streams from my perspective. And um, I, we, I will, let's say, go also on some specific key factors when we are talking on, on uh, about the steering committee. And we will talk in the end on, on a topic um, called conscious transformation. Okay. So, and um, for this talk, I would like to use a special definition for what is agile, okay, in this session. I would like to define agile at this point as a discipline to create collaboration, okay? Um, discipline means that uh, having cadences for thinking together, okay? Uh, we will come back to this topic in, in a while. So, uh, before starting, I will go for uh, to explain some basics, basics on agile on, on general transformation. I don't know if you know the Cotter model. Uh, any of you, and uh, maybe we can use we you can talk or you can use the chat. Um, only for me to understand what are the level of knowledge of. of these things for you. Do you know the, the Cotter model for, for changing in an organization? Do you have any idea? Are you familiar with this? No? Okay. I will I will explain it very fast. So the idea, the idea of these changes steps is that the first thing you have to do is to create a, a need for a for the change. Usually it can be uh, things that should be fixed uh, 
or improve in an, uh, with urgency. After this, to create a, a coalition of people who will deal with this urgency and create a vision for this change. We will be where we we will be um, after the change is implemented. Okay, and communicate this vision. And after this, we we start to make changes, identifying quick wins, and so. So at a high level, this is the the Cotter model. Another model we, I will use is the Roger Innovation Adoption model that I suppose that maybe some of you are more familiarized with this. Any of you? Have, have you seen this model before? No? Okay. Alexander, do you know this model? <laughs> I saw, I, I've seen that. Okay, you have seen that. Okay, yeah. the idea that is behind this is when you introduce an innovation, uh, and in this case, in an organization, some people will, I will take here, uh, will use, some people will start uh, using this innovation, despite this innovation is not perfectly defined. So because they, they feel that, okay, I really like this. So I will start with playing with this without no problems, okay? There are, there, there are other people that will start, uh, that will only embrace this change if they find that it will be useful for them, if they are, they are let's say, clear, clear benefits for them in taking this change. And they usually need that this change is defined, it has a clear vision, clear, clear steps, okay? They need to feel sure on this change. And in the end, there are people that it call the laggards, because the first word are called the innovation, the, the, the innovators or early adopters. And the laggards are, are the people that are not for the change. And maybe even they will fight with this change against this change. Okay. So it's good to know that this kind of the, this kind of behaviors. Uh, will be in place in an organization before starting with any change, okay? And we will use this model in a while. Another model we will use a lot is the ADCAR model. Uh, again, the question, any of you knows the ADCAR model? No? Okay. So the ADCAR model, uh, the, Means the, means the following. So the A is for awareness. If you want people uh, to start uh, to, to change, the, the, the first thing you need is that they, that they need to know that they have to change. They need awareness of the change. Once the people have awareness, it starts the desire, the, the desire for the change. And it's not a direct correlation. Maybe you are aware that one change could be beneficial for you, but you don't want to change. For example, maybe you, you know that smoking is extremely bad, okay? And you are aware of this, but you don't take the decision to stop smoking, but it's a precondition. You will not change, uh, you will not change a, uh, and you don't have the desire if you don't have enough awareness. Okay, so when you have so and, and there, this is why there, there are these steps. Okay, so you start with awareness, you generate desire. After this, you need knowledge. Okay, I want to do this change. I I need to know how to change. I need training. I need ideas. I need okay, and after this, there is the the ability so the the idea of ability is you need to start to practice in order to integrate the change okay the r is for reinforcement okay so and we will use also this model for creating change in a change in organization create awareness so give awareness knowledge ability and all these things 
And another thing that I will I usually use in order to create change in an organization is that are this this axis for change management. When you when you introduce a change, you need to communicate people that there will be a change. You need to train people. So, and in fact, there is a correlation. Communication is related with ability, okay? And training is related with creating knowledge, okay? And support coaching is what you need when people start to change, start to introduce new practices or whatever. You need to support them and coach them. Understood until now? Okay. And another model I really like to use is the transformation pyramid, okay? But the idea that is behind this, it is, for me, is to, it serves to, let's say, organize the things you have to do in an organization. So, uh, let me explain what is uh, the what is this this why why this pyramid. So the idea is, what we do, we want is to have let's say uh, to to help a person in his life. Let's say we want to help a customer to do a thing in a better way. Okay, and we want to be uh, we we want to understand what are the needs and we are if we are really serving our customer as soon as possible. We need quick feedback loops in order to be closer to our customers, okay? You cannot achieve this if you don't have a specific organization. You cannot be agile with your customer if your organization is not agile. If your organization don't allow you to, uh, let's say, make decisions faster, uh, collaborate uh, with people, in a faster way, integrate, uh, fast, fastly integrate the feedback, okay? So this is why you need a specific organization in order to be agile with your customer. And for sure, you need a specific technology, you need technologies that allow you to introduce changes uh, in a fast way without having an expensive cost, okay? In order to serve to your customer uh, as agile as possible. And all these things only work if you have a culture that really support, supports um, this way of working. So if you, we are talking on having people collaborating uh, and empowering people, you need a culture that is based, based also on this, that really values this way of working. You, if you have a common and control culture and you try to introduce collaborative ways of working or processes like a scrum, for example, there, there will be a clash because uh, and friction because you are introducing collaborative practices without changing the mindset of people. Okay, this is why culture is in, at the bottom. Okay, it's more or less clear. So the idea is if you have a uh, why I use this, this, this transformation pyramid? Because when you have things to do in an organization, a lot of ideas, initiatives, experiments to do, you can classify them and try to put them okay, in, in these places. So I have ideas for, the, for how to be more agile with the customer. I have ideas for changing the organization. I have ideas related to the, or needs or problems related to technology. And I have ideas related to culture, okay? So it serves, uh, it serves to, let's say, classify. It's a framework for classifying all the things you want to do in, a, in, a, in an organization. And for creating a strategy, you can also identify your current status, your current problems, needs, the future vision with this pyramid, okay? And you can create a strategy and roadmap also based on this pyramid, okay? So it serves to organize your work. Okay. Any question until, um, until now? It's all okay? Yeah? Okay. I will continue. Um, so once we have these ideas of, let's say, models, I will continue with the, um, what is the topic for today. We are talking on trans, uh, of agile transformation 
starting from the steering committee. And this implies that the agile transformation should start in the steering committee. It should be the first place where to uh, introduce the change. So if we are talking on cross-functional teams and collaboration and all this stuff, one the first question we should do is to, let's say, think on the steering committee as a team, okay? I would like at this point to ask you a question. That is, if you think that your steering committee is a team, okay? And I would like, I, I really like you, uh, if you can pl please uh, enter to into Menti and answer this question in order to see what do you think of your steering committee, okay? And we will present the results. Let's see if there are people right now <laughs> following this conversation. I'm not seeing, still not seeing any result. I don't know if it's not working. Maybe it's not working. Oops. Okay. Okay. Let me show. Let me show the results. Uh, what is happening is this. Okay. Oh, you are really lucky. Your steering committee is a team. Maybe we can skip a lot of slides <laughs> because there were a lot of slides uh, related to this. But I think it, it will make sense for the people who are not, let's say, uh, on, um, online seeing the seeing this session uh that maybe they are in this part of sometimes and nope and so i will go for these slides or what happens if or our steering committee is not a team okay so uh, i will continue uh, okay so what are the characteristics of a team first one is uh, if you have you have a team because you have shared goals if you don't have shared goals you don't have a team okay a team is a group of people who collaborate that think together okay we share accountability with an agreed working group, okay uh, and can be there can be more things okay so um the first question is if the steering committee has really has shared goals, what happens if the goals if, if the goals of the steering committee are not shared? Any any idea? What happens if you have seen a steering committee that don't share goals? Um, what what which kind of things do you think it can happen? Uh, I suppose we will apply not coordinated force and uh, this will completely mess the team where we work. Okay. Rework, for example, you say? Yeah. Okay. Any other idea of the things that could be that could happen? I think that uh, if we don't share a goal, we are then a group. We are not a team. So. Yeah don't have the same goals, then we are just a uh, bunch of people in the same place. We are not team. Yeah. In which kind of consequences in, 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 the, in your organization you can see if they are not a team? What are they? What do you think? I think that uh, coincidence uh, can be that we just like lost our track. So like uh, we start to be uh, on the uh, different sides and then we don't know in which way we should go as an organization. And that can be really problematic. Okay, 
Interesting. Okay, so um, I will show you some other things that can happen here. Okay. So um, one clear thing that could happen is that they have different priorities. They have goals, but they are conflicting. Okay. And they are not, let's say, and if there is not alignment, what is happens is that this lack of alignment collapses be below them. So, I mean, uh, the teams have, have to do some things, but uh, they, they have not been still not solved. So in the end, there will be some fires in, in the trenches, let's say, because there, there are things that, that ha still have not been aligned, okay? So we have to create, uh, we need to create these shared, these shared goals. Any idea on how to create these shared goals? There are a lot of ways of creating shared shared goals for an organization or for a steering committee. Do you have any idea? No? Okay. I think first first we'll be discuss when discuss needs uh, and discuss uh, problems which uh, are ahead of the company. Okay. Good. Good. Very good. Okay, so um, I will introduce another idea, another let's say topic here. That is, in your in a company, you have two types of work. One is to do the work, okay, and the other one is to improve how to do the work, okay. And what happens usually is that uh, the steering committee and a lot of people are really focused in do the work, okay. And what happens is that uh, if each one only does uh, her part, let's say, of the work, uh, they are not collaborating, okay? In, and in the steering committee, if you understand that the steering committee is a group of specialists, each one with doing uh, her own stuff, in reality, they are not a team. They are only do doing his part or her part of the, of, of, of the let's say, of the value chain, let's say, okay? Um, and the problem of not having time, that is a thing that I usually see a lot, not having time because the, the, the organization are, are, let's say, extremely overload of work. If you don't have time to improve how you do the work, you start to create a organizational debt, okay? And it, it arrives a moment when there is a crisis, strong crisis, uh, that, that uh, forced you to fix things in your worst moment, okay? So the, or these problems, these uh, organizational and system problems are a great opportunity for the steering committee to work together. Uh, organizational system problems can be fixed uh, with using directives, structures, and processes, culture, and all this stuff, okay? So, and it should be relatively easy to fix these things, okay? To, to make them work as a team, to reach an agreement on what are the more important things to improve in the organization, because these should be things that really matter, for, matter to them, okay? And you can realize here with that we are talking on creating awareness. These things should be solved they are important for us. So we are creating desire for doing this thing, these things together, okay? And you can make, make, make them self-organize in small groups around these problems and using cadences and visual management boards, like, like an, let's say an agile team uh, in order to solve these organizational problems, okay? You have, so you have, a board with the main problems, with cadences for them to synchronize. So they start to work together with the same priorities, okay? It should be, it seems that it should be relatively easy to make them work in this way and to have quality time to do this kind of work and synchroniz synchronizations, okay? And my question here if, is that if you think that this, this is enough to make them work as a team, what do you think?
Any idea? Do you think this is enough? Well, okay. So, um, let's work on the topic of self-awareness before, let's say, before uh, this, these things. So be before, let's say, I will go, so before these things really work, so the idea of creating a team in charge or solving or fixing the, the main organizational problems, sometimes you need to create the, to ref, make reflect them on the concept of team. What is, if they are a team, okay? And to create self-awareness on this. So I don't know if you, you know the, the Lencioni model for knowing where is a team. And a basic thing on a team is that they need to start with trust, okay? If there is no trust, they don't, uh, they don't, let's say, enter into positive conflicts that solve things. Uh, if you have positive conflicts, you create commitment, and with this commitment and accountability, in the end, you, you get the results you expect for the organization, okay? So one thing you can do is to make them think on this, okay? On if they are, let's say, if they have trust, if they avoid or not conflict and so. So one thing that I, I like to do is to, is, to do a, is to start with a personal assessment. So each person in the steering committee um, answers from his point of view how he's, he sees himself. If he sees, if he think that he's a person that trusts the other people, if he's a person that doesn't avoid conflict, if he's a person who has commitment, accountability, if he's a person that uh, gives results for the organization, okay? And usually they score themselves pretty well. The problem is when they do ask them to score themselves as a team, because uh, not surprisingly, or surprisingly, they score the teams um, in a, with, let's say, lower scores than individually. So here we have an issue because we are, they think that they are very good and they think that the team is not very good. So something is happening here. So, uh, we compare both, let's say, scorings in the steering committee, and we we have a chat, and we get insights. Okay, so we are creating awareness on where we are as a, where, where they are as a team. Okay, and we can let's say identify what to improve as a team and create some team agreements if needed. So we are creating awareness as a team. Uh, second thing that I, I like to create, I like to use to create awareness is as an, organ, as an organization in which degree of maturity we are, do we are, okay? Um, so we talk on the, on, we, we review the model of reinventing of organizations of La Lux, okay? You need to identify where is this company. If it's a company that is, uh, uh, mainly orange going to green, of it's a company that is still has a lot of, uh, of things in the yellow stage, of if we are, let's say, um, uh, in the green stage and maybe we should go, uh, or we'd like to go more to the teal stage. So uh, we are creating here awareness as an organization, identifying which kind of things we could work on in order to, let's say, improve or mature in the organization, okay? And another important thing here is to create self-awareness on our leadership style, okay? Uh, so the idea is that if we are for creating an organization 
uh, and I will go to our, our first, let's say, this, uh, definition of agile. If we are creating, if we want to create an organization that is based on collaboration, uh, making people thinking together on in order to great uh, to create better solution in less time. For in order to create this, we need a special type of leadership. Okay. And we need to know where we are. We need to create awareness on where we are regarding our leadership in uh, leadership style in the organization. And we need feedback, okay, in order to have coherence. So we have to define which type of leadership we have in the organization. Um, for example, we we maybe we we want people that has uh, can create inspiring visions with people who know how to create with with their team strategies. Okay, um, people who get things done, make decisions. People that work the system in order to make the system improve and learn. Uh, uh, leaders that develop uh, uh, their teams in. Uh, because only in this way we will create empowerment. We can create safe empowerment for, for the people. Uh, leaders that take care of the motivation of their teams and that give examples of behavior, okay? So the point here is, okay, we, decide, we can decide the type of leadership we need in the organization, creating, as it is here, five questions, for example, and um, getting feedback of uh, in order to know which of these characteristics to improve and create a, let's say, a program of improvement for the leadership. So we are creating self-awareness as leaders in the organization, okay? So uh, understanding this, I would like to talk on the topic on culture change, okay, because what is happening is that uh, the structures, the processes in the organization are extremely related to the way the mental models are the way of thinking in the management and in the senior management, okay? So uh, if we want to uh, introduce new processes, new way of thinking, new, new structures, we need uh, so and introducing uh, introducing a culture, a change in the culture. We need in some way to know how to influence the way we think in the or the way the the, the, the steering committee th uh, thinks. Okay, so I will go back to the this pyramid of transformation in order to explain this in a, in in more detail. Okay, so the idea is, you know, that uh, in order to have, I, I, I will explain this very fast. In order to have, uh, to getting uh, closer to the to to our customers uh, in a faster way, we need a specific organization, okay, that can be agile enough, and we need a techno a culture, uh, behaviors that really support and. Uh, that really support these this, this new processes, okay? So we are introducing, for example, Scrum or Kanban in order to create collaboration. So it, it would not make sense to have strong processes or, of control and a mindset of, or, or using fear to drive people and all this stuff, okay? But why people use these things as a command and control fear on all this stuff in order to manage organizations. This is because under all these things, there is a extra layer that is called consciousness. We, uh, I will define consciousness as, as how do you understand the world? How do you see the world? How do you interpret the world? So, you interpret the world with some filters. These filters are your mental models. For example, if you have a mental model that your organization is like a mechanism, it's a mechanism that 
Uh, so, uh, if you think that it's like a car, a mechanism, a machine, you're, uh, you what you will want is to have uh, all these pieces of this of of these parts of this mechanism perfectly fit. Okay, so you will define. Stream, you will define perfectly what are the roles of the organization, how are the processes, and all this stuff. And if you put strong, let's say, roles, strong processes, and strong, let's say, dates in order to have things done, you can think that all the organization will work perfectly. Okay, this is a mental model. But, the, but what happens is that the reality is far more complex than this. You have complexity in the requirements of things to be done on the needs of the customer. You don't have really clear what are the needs of the customer. Uh, you work with people. People are complex. Are, uh, let's say people have complexities. I mean, the human, uh, the humans are complex beings. Okay. Uh, you have complexities in the in in related with the technology, the knowledge of things. So, this mental model of thinking that the that an organization is a mechanism that allow you to get the most uh, the, to to get the full potential of the organization because you are not taking into consideration the complexities you have. Okay, so. But in any case, with these mental models, you create structures that really fit with them. Okay, so uh, if you think, uh, if you think, if we, for you the, uh, the the control of the organization is extremely important, you create extremely strong uh, structures and processes for controlling the organization. Okay, but it, it will be not enough, not enough. And it will be for sure. Uh, conf it, it will be conflicting with the agile practices. Maybe you want to introduce in the organization, and you need to create this coherent coherence in the mindset, because if not, there will be a lot of friction. Okay. So the point is that we want to introduce more mental models in the senior management in the company, because in this way they will have uh, more opportunities. They will have, let's say, they will create uh, different solutions for the, for the problems they have, rich, richer solutions, let's say, okay? So as much mental models you have for interpret, in, in interpreting the reality, uh, as much uh, possible good solutions you can find, okay? So, um, since we, I will talk on mental models in this uh, in this slide, um, the idea is uh, with this slide is okay. If we train people in these mental models, uh, we can create new behaviors. We we can create new ways of thinking, new structures, and so. Okay. So, which kind of mental models I would like to use? The first and basic one, because a lot of mental models can be, let's say, constructed on top of this. The first one is the mental model of, of, of motivation of people that is described, for example, in, the, in a book called Drive by Daniel Pink, that says that, okay, uh, people are motivated if they have autonomy, if they can uh, uh, learn things uh, and improve the way they are they are working continuously, if they know what are the that what which is the purpose of things that they are doing, and they are also intrinsic factors factors that you can take also into account that they are recognition, socialization, and for sure the salary, but salary is let's say only. Uh, let's say hygienic factor. Okay. Another mental model you can you can show to your uh, steering committee is why people uh, uh, why people has uh, people have commitment on things. Okay, and this is based 
uh, and, and commitment is not a thing you can ask directly ask for to the people. Commitment is a consequence on of several things. So commitment is a, is a consequence of having autonomy, empowerment, okay? So commitment derives for, for these things. So for in order to, ha to, to have commitment of people, ideally, you, have, you should have a shared purpose with your team, okay? As a leader with your team, you, you, you need to have, or, or a leader, to a, uh, in order to give more autonomy to a, per, a specific person or a team, okay, you, you need to give them uh, a share, share you, you need to create a shared purpose, okay? You have, have also to work on their skills. They need to, to have uh, enough skills and information in order to be autonomous. So as a leader, you have to develop one of the, your main, your main duties is to develop, develop your people and you have to create some boundaries in order to uh, make this autonomy flexible. Boundaries can be, this should be done in no more than, uh, I don't know, some, some weeks, some months, uh, with uh, as much as uh, a quantity of euros, uh, and or something should be done always respecting the values of the company okay but should you have in order to for the autonomy in order to to work you know you have to let's say create this shared purpose give enough skills information and some boundaries okay so uh, from here we derive that the role of the leader uh, is to create an alignment to a, to, a, to a vision, okay? This, this part of shared purpose, you have to develop people in order to achieve this vision. And in this way, you are mobilizing the collective intelligence of the company. We are, you are creating more points, a distributed way of creating decisions, okay? So uh, the organization is more agile, okay? And uh, we, you can so also show you so show them how to create more flow in the company, uh, make them understand what are the, the principles of Lean. Uh, you can show them uh, extremely useful tools like systems thinking in order to understand the complexity of the organization, what are the main problems, the main causes, and how uh, uh, to, to be the, the main causes in order to know where to put their, their effort. You can show them a lot of different models and different ways of, of understanding the reality. Any question until now? It's more or less, more or less clear. Okay. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. So, but. But uh, I have some bad news. Um, this doesn't work so well. Because to know something is different than having it integrated. So you can train your management in all these topics. You can make them to even they can pass an exam on all these topic, all these topics with a score of ten. Okay, and in the end, maybe they have not integrated all this knowledge, all these things. And in a crisis moment, when there is stress, they will show you clear, clearly show you that they have not integrated all these things. Okay. And here at this point, I have another question. Is that if you really think that people change, at least if people change in a business time frame, because we're talking on businesses. So do you think that in a, uh, if, if in a business time frame, a person that, for example, is extremely, mm, let's say, it's a person of pure control, can 
change his, beha his behavior in one, two years? Or if he has specific values, if he can change them um, in this time frame? Can you please go to answer this? This menti. Okay. Sometimes. Well, interesting. So you are answering sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> okay. So it's not a just yes, sure. And it's not uh, no, it's sometimes. Okay, let's see how to make people change change if, if possible. My point here is that people don't change in a business time frame for sure. Okay, and Jasmina once uh, once uh, so several years ago she, she told me that people are what they are, so you can expect you cannot expect them to change too much. Okay, and I agree. I have seen changes of people, but with a lot of work and a lot of, and uh, and maybe years of 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 strong of dedication. Okay, but in any case, in order to change, people need to be aware of the need of the need of change and and to grow a desire for change, as we know. Okay, so. Um, I need a lot, and in order to create a deep change, they they need to be willing to do a lot of personal work in self development. But there is a clue here. There is an interesting thing here. We are talking on changing consciousness. Changing consciousness doesn't work in a linear way. I will go back to this point. So if you want to change these people, I mean, in if you want to create changes in this layer, in the layer of consciousness, in the layer of mental models, and all these things, you uh, when I say that the, the changes in this layer are not linear, is that you can train people in the same topic 10 uh, 20 times, and maybe you will only see a marginal uh, change, very few change, okay? Very small changes. Um, but consciousness can be really activated and changed. Maybe maybe you will not change in your whole life the, your, the way you and interpret the world, but maybe you can change the way you interpret the world in only three minutes. And this is the interesting thing. The interesting thing is that uh, the change of our consciousness are not linear. And it, they don't depend on the amount of training you, you get. Okay, so let's work on this. Um, you can create impactful experiences in your context so that you can create uh, a change on consciousness. And if you think uh, you have, uh, I'm sure that you have experimented several triggers for deep change in your life after impact, uh, after receiving impact or living impactful experience, experiences. Okay, so the idea here is how to create these impactful, impactful experiences in an organizational context that is not easy at all. But I will show you very fast one example of this. When consulting in a company, coaching in a company, I realized that they had a big problem. And the problem was that the CEO was in charge of the of most company decisions, by far that the rest of the steering committee. And it didn't make, make sense. It didn't make sense, but because he was lacking, let's say, the opportunity of integrating more points of view, 
uh, and, have a, and having re richer, let's say, um, solutions. Okay, and the team, the the team, the, the steering committee group, let's say, was always waiting for the decision, or waiting a lot for the decision of the CEO before uh, thinking by themselves. Uh, so it didn't make 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 sense. Okay, so I decided to create a. An impactful, an impactful experience in order to create awareness of the change, of the need, okay, and also a desire for if a desire for the change in the CEO, a desire for changing the situation, and it, so the idea for creating so it was to create an impactful experience that was, let's say, strong enough to make him res resonate even with his own personal values. So this is what happened. I decided to put, uh, let's say, usually use a chair, but it can be here, it can be a different thing, okay? I put uh, here, imagine that this is a chair, okay? A chair in the middle of a, of a room, okay? I, I asked the steering committee to to place uh, to to place uh, them around this this chair this point that represented uh, their influence regarding how the strategic decisions were uh, were made in the company. Okay, and also to this to put themselves um, in relationship with the other people in the steering committee and this is what happened so these are the the point where the the the, the strategic decisions were made here we had the ceo here we had the cfo no, the CFO, okay, the CFO, so, and the president of the company. So the people who made decisions in the company, the, the who, who were making continuously the decision in the, in the company were the CEO, the CFO, financials, and the president of the company. After them, there was a, a line of people, it's like, it was like a hierarchy, a line of people that were behind them, even fighting for being the last one. So I don't make any kind of decision here. And I, okay. People that were totally aside, important people in this in the steering committee that were totally aside of the types of decisions, of the of the of the strategic decisions that uh, that were being made in the company. Okay. So they feel themselves that they don't, don't have any opportunity, okay, to influence in the company. And for sure, uh, the, uh, you can see that the CEO, the, the, the head of the CEO explodes, okay, because he didn't want to talk this way of, 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 of running the company. So we, have a, we had a chat, a reflection on the things that were, on how things uh, were, were done, and uh, after this chat, uh, we we had a second exercise that, that that was okay. If we fix these things, how do you would you feel? And the team plays together in this way, and you can uh, maybe you cannot see this, but there is a let's say first line, first line of uh, for making decisions that was richer than before, and a second line that had no problem at all in not being, let's say, in the in in this in as main uh, as the main decision makers of the company. Okay. And it, they would be comfortable in working in this way. So after this session, the CEO started to work in a different way with the C with the steering committee. 
uh, in order to in order to run the company with more let's say collective intelligence okay so impactful experiences is a way to make people change okay let's continue and any question until now so okay I would have one question if I can ask. Yeah, for sure. People don't change. People are what they are. Well, that's a very interesting sentence. It could be true. Well, I think I don't have enough years of life and experience to uh, confirm that or to uh, don't confirm that. But um, it's an interesting topic itself about people and about what they change if they change anything so somehow that topic was main topic uh in our company today and it reminds me uh on some dialogues we had today so i'm interested in finding out what do you think personally about uh whether people actually change or they just accept some new things and uh, they create new habit to be in touch with that uh, acceptance or they change some parts of them. Okay, interesting. What I would say, I, I'm about to explain this in the following slides, <laughs> because in the end, what you do, but I, I can for sure um, say some things right now, that is people, I mean, it's a question of sur surviving, okay? Uh, I mean, it's a very, let's say, it's an animal instinct or, you can, or it's the pure nature, okay? You adapt to the context where you are. If you don't adapt uh, enough to the yourself to the context where you are, you, you, you should escape from this context because you, you could die. But in the end, so when you change some things, there are people that, needs some kind of adapt, ad, adaptation to the context, but other people are freezed because suddenly the context is the natural, the new context is the natural way for them uh, for behaving themselves. So some people adapt, some people are freezed. That this is the idea. And some people that is unable to, some people are unable to survive, so, so some people escape or some people are, let's say, uh, fired for the, from, this, from this context because there is not alignment. There is not alignment on the things that are asked to you. The things that, are, see, so in each company, they are rewards for several types of behavior. Some things are good and recognize it as good, some things are recognized as bad, and you have to work accordingly in order to, to survive or not to suffer too much. But if, you, if these things and these rewards are perfectly okay for you, you are thriving in this organization. Okay? Have, uh, have I answered you, Alexander? Fair enough. Okay, <laughs> so I will continue. So, um, there is another concept I really like a lot that this is culture shadow. Culture shadow here is that when you put a leader in an, in an organization, uh, her mindset, her mental models, uh, let's say, propagates behind her, okay? And he can create, he can create an special environment behind them that can, can be extremely good or extremely bad, okay? So if this is real, because I have seen this a lot of times, one of the things you can do in order to change the mental models in an organization and how things are designed is to change the leaders. So you can move leaders away, fire them, hire new ones, and this is a new way of creating a new mindset. Okay, this is an option and I have seen this. And this is the part that I have uh, just told you, uh, Alexander, that these people are to survive, okay, but others get freed. So um, this is why I, 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 I say that 
people usually don't change too much. They adapt or they get freed in, in, if you change the, the, the context. But there is one thing here that is the idea, the, another context that is culture follow structure. So when you change the structure of the company, that is what are the good things in the company, when you change this, uh, you generate different behaviors, a new culture, okay? And the idea is stop trying to change people and instead of this, change the system. Okay, this is the idea. Because changing people sometimes is extremely difficult, but if you change the system, people will adapt to the new system. Okay. Uh, so after seeing all this stuff, I will let's say, summarize all this stuff. So it will be my first summary, summary for today, because there will be some more summaries, but we have only 15 minutes. But anyway, I will try to finish on time. And my first summary here is that uh, if I have to think on transformation work streams, I, I see that one important work stream is, re is related to organizational improvements, okay? Uh, where you prioritize the things to be done in the organization. And you have, and the other thing you can do is to create new structures, okay? New structures where, uh, where because these new structures will create new behaviors, okay? And in our case, we are talking on the idea of agile teams and the idea of value centers. That the idea of value center here is that you create micro companies inside of a company. And when you create micro companies with a clear purpose, ownership, and all this stuff, new behaviors will arise. Okay. Uh, okay. So, by the way, creating value centers in a company, uh, you are descaling the organization and you're creating more agility by distributing the decision making of the company. Okay. So, um, and in order to create uh, another tip here is that if you want to create new structures, you don't have uh, infinite energy in your, maybe to, let's say, you don't have infinite energy to change a full company that maybe took 30 years to be like it is right now. You don't have all the energy of 30 years in order to refactor the company. So you have to, you need to have one strategy in where to put your energy, okay? So I, my recommendation here is that you get, you analyze your strategic lines in the company and you identify where there is a clear need of business agility, where do you have the right people with the right mindset in order not to fight with them? Because people in the end is, are the, are who are, who cre really create the transformation, okay? And uh, the, the people are, are who really uh, make real the changes, okay? So it's better if you start with the right people. Uh, you have only also to think is if it's the right moment for these people to, to, to make, make this change because sometimes they are busy with other topics, okay? And you have to select these strategic lines with high probability of success, okay? Because you need um, winning horses in the beginning in order to create example. So you are, let's say, create, you are in some way creating a selection funnel of strategic business, business lines in order to know where, where to uh, start, in, start with success, okay? So will you avoid some people that uh, will consume you a lot of energy, okay? And by the way, a contra-intuitive contra way of thinking maybe here is that if we for sure know that some people will be for the change and some people will fight against the change, it doesn't many change at all to communicate the changes to the whole company at the same time. You have to only to start communicating with the people that will be directly affected for the change because you want to end the energy for them, not for fighting against people that are against the change. So 
And for each value center, my recommendation is that they have for sure for each team of value center, their own improvement board, their own feedback leadership, the feedback on the leadership style. So and you can realize that we are always using the same pattern. The same pattern we are we, we use for the steering committee. We are using the same pattern for each team and for each value center we will create. Okay. So some key factors for doing a change that starts from the steering committee is that if we need power for making change and a constant, constant supply of energy in order to uh, avoid uh, that the change will, will lose, let's say, uh, energy, okay? We need a, a high level sponsor with the right mindset, for sure, that really believes on this, or at least that she's a person that is humble and curious for uh, in testing in new things, okay? That is important because it will not, if uh, otherwise it, it, it will be, she will be our ceiling, uh, ceiling, glass ceiling, okay? And a facilitator also, uh, a change agent that continuously introduces energy for the change because otherwise the entropy will degrade the system. If we need, as always, if we before a change a change is fully integrated in the in our way of work, we need to introduce regularly energy until it's part of our business as usual. Let's say, okay. And I would like to talk. We are about to finish, but I would like to talk on continuous transformation because we are talking on transformation from the student committee. And it makes a lot of sense to talk on this topic, continuous transformation, conscious transformation, sorry. We have talked a lot on consciousness, so I would like to go deeper on this topic. Um, when I talk on continuous transformation, uh, when I talk with, uh, on, on continuous transformation, I'm talking on having respect for all the stakeholders, okay? And having and having a higher purpose in the company, okay? Um, what does means? I would like to make a clear differentiation among instrumental transformation that is creating, I mean, doing things faster, faster and more agile in the company, only this in order to get more money, okay? And conscious transformation. When we, we talk on conscious, conscious transformation, we're taking into account all our employees because we know if, we, if our employees are motivated, uh, they, can, they can do extremely, extremely, let's say, incredible things, okay? and having a positive impact on society and our environment. This is a conscious transformation. And having this higher purpose that is farther than only making money, don't, the, what happens in the end is that the commitment of people is higher and we are able also to uh, attract more talent to the company. Okay, so this is the idea of conscious transformation. And by the way, my company or higher, my company uh, works on, on uh, um, electronic billing, but our higher purpose is to inspire other companies to create healthy organization in order to create healthy organizations where people can thrive. In fact, we have been several years in a row, uh, best workplaces in, in Spain one of the best coast places in Spain. So we want to inspire other people to know how we work, how we think, okay, in order to create these this best places to work. So we have, let's say, and we have an instrumental way of working that is creating, uh, that is uh, uh, our electronic billing. And this money, uh, the 
uh, allows us to create a to work on a higher purpose that is to uh, let's say inspire other people uh, in order to um, create um, let's say healthier healthier environments for working okay okay i don't know if it's too much for you today because i have explained a lot of things <laughs> It's going to be a very fuzzy Thursday, I would say. Guys, are you alive or you are just in your thoughts? Yeah, I would for, like to hear. For, for sure, it's just a lot of new ideas or all ideas repacked in a fancy and uh, interested way. It's systematic, it's good. I like it really. So, for sure, it's great. Let's continue. Guys, be free to ask any questions if, if you would like to ask. Now it's the time because we are close to the end of the session. So use this opportunity to ask any questions to Xavi if you want. And that's it. Is this Svana? Something like Svana? Something like this? It's Hvala. <laughs> Hvala, Hvala, sorry. That's right. Hvala. <laughs> okay. Xavier, I would have one question. Uh, I hope it's not so noisy because I am in a coffee shop. <laughs> so, um, what uh, is your approach? By, because uh, you have seen, I'm quite sure that a company, some leaders, uh, contract try to contract you, uh, and they ask you, "We would like to have agile or whatever it is, no, uh, that make uh, an improvement in the work." And but the leadership team, the steering committee, they don't want to change, and they don't want to to make the effort. So that will be uh, a zombie <laughs> that you that you implement their agile models or more more progressive ways or of working in collaboration and the leadership is not not changing because i am sure you have the ex experience already yeah what is your what 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 do you do what do you say to these people <laughs> so the idea the idea here the idea here uh, i would i would like to go to the to this to this to, to to this part, uh, this this funnel. So the idea is maybe not the whole steering committee is for uh, making changes, but maybe some people in the steering committee are for these changes. Maybe, I don't know, one on, one on eight, one on five, one on 10. So the idea is, okay, these people are interested. So if you remind this, you can see that some of them, so, these are the people that are the innovators, the, the people who want to make things in a different way. So you start with these people creating a positive experience that for the people that are in the middle, these people are the pragmatic ones. They only do things if they are useful for them. So if you create a good experience here, this is why uh, uh, I'm talking on high uh, probability of, su of success. If you create good experience here, they will start to uh, to try to understand, to try new things, because only because they need this. And one important thing is that, uh, for example, a clue for you, I don't use the word agile too much. In fact, I, if I can, I, go, I don't use the word agile. I'm solving problems. I'm solving problems for the steering committee. I'm solving problems for the senior management. And I use the toolbox of Agile in the places where it makes sense to be used, okay? So uh, all the messages continuously is, are, I'm solving your problems and this is good for you. I'm not introducing, let's say, a framework, I mean, at, as it is because it's what, because uh, I'm a fundamentalist, let's say. So you are focusing on the benefits, the wins for all the people all who are participating. Okay. In, in fact, mm -hmm. in fact, I'm 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 not looking for I'm I'm not using the benefits. I'm using the problems and the needs they have. I'm not selling their product. It's a question of selling. I'm not selling my product. No, it's not. It's not I was not talking about selling your product, but the benefits of the implementation of yeah. whatever you offer. Yeah. Because obviously they, they contract you because they want to have the benefits. 
yeah. the, the outcome. Mm -hmm. yes. But I map, I'm always mapping these benefits against their problems or their mm -hmm. vision. They yeah. need to, to, to create the relationship. If not, it doesn't work so well. Absolutely. So you can say that you uh, first recognize problems and then uh, you gave them ugly solution for that problems. Can you repeat? Sorry. Uh, so we can say that you first uh, recognize some problems in the organization and then you gave them ugly uh, solution for that problems. So the idea is, the idea is you, you have, it's a question of selling a product. Okay, the, but the idea, the basic things are, you need to know the context, the situation, how they are working, and because in this way, you know if if what you will offer will make sense for them. So you have, this is this is called the SPIN framework for selling things. The SPIN, S is for, uh, uh, S is for situation, P is for problem, E, in, I, impact. So you first study what are the context, after this, you identify what are the problems and you have a talk with them. So you are connecting and uh, they you, you should make them think on what would be the benefits of solving these problems. And after this, um, you reach an agreement in the steering committee on, on that these three, four, five things are important for them to be solved. So in this way, you create alignment on these things should be solved. And, and you start to, let's say, helping them to solve this, these problems, uh, maybe maybe giving them some answers if they are not able to, to, to see different options. I'm, I, I, am I uh, answering you? Yeah? Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. We have one more question from Mylene. What are your suggestions for manufacturing industry, which is a mix of software and production worlds? Oh, <laughs> tough one. Okay, uh, let's see. Let's think that uh, agile is not a silver bullet that can be used in all places. So all places have the complexity and the, and, and uh, their context. So other things can could, could, could be useful. For example, if you have a man, if you are you have you have a part of this manufacturing products, maybe lean and six sigma six sigma could be useful for you. If you are in a in a in the field of knowledge workers with a lot of complexity and where the inputs and the out, outputs are not clear. Uh, the agile way of working and lean startup are the the best way the, the maybe the best tools you can use so in each place you can combine dif uh, you can use different things and by the way if you uh, for the people that are in the factory if you want them to participate in the in an let's say in a improvement uh, project Maybe in this improve, uh, so an improvement project, let's say, is uh, is for is is when you use the knowledge of of people. In this way, in, in this part, you can use for sure lean tools and agile tools because you have changed uh, the context, the, the 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 realm, let's say, of the problem. You are not working in this moment. You are that you are identifying opportunities of improvement. You are not working in a in a in a in a chain in a in a chain in a in a factory. You are working on the looking at the chain from a complexity perspective. Do you get my point? Pavel says, depends on how many trash can you produce before Brock. <laughs> okay. That was a pretty one constatation. <laughs> okay, guys, if there is any more questions, please, you can ask Xavi. You're welcome, Eileen. And if there is not, I suppose it is time to close this session to end this Thursday's meetup. Are there any questions? Thanks. Thanks a lot. It was interesting. You're welcome. Yeah.
in any case, uh, so, um, I was thinking, that I, I was reading this, this in the in this, I was reading the um, the the chat, and right now in, with my team we are working in a company that are is not uh, is not IT. They are let's say they, they produce things in a factory and they have also knowledge workers, but they were they as as they are a mainly a, a manufacturing industry. A uh, frameworks like Scrum. Uh, don't work very well there because you cannot introduce. Uh, I mean, the the, the pure the, the Scrum as a software management software development method method doesn't work very well. But here, what you have to do is to use the principles that are behind Scrum and Agile. That does you need quality time to make a team thinking together, synchronize, reflect. So the plan, do, check, act. And you, you have to the, you figure out how to introduce these quality times in their way of in their way of working. But this is the idea to go to the basics. Great. Thank you, Chavi. Okay, guys, thank you very much for participating in one more of Agile Humans meetups. It was very interesting. Good topics for thinking, I would say. Uh, Fuzzy Thursday become, became actually a very uh, inspiring Thursday, I would say. So Chavi, thank you for that. You're welcome. Uh, guys, well, this would be the end of this session. I would like to invite you to come to our next meetup, follow our event page, and you're going to see some news we prepared for you. We will pause them shortly. And thank you very much for your time. I guess I can stop recording right now and wish you a good night. Thank you. Bye. Bye.